Your mortal flesh keeps silent And with fear and trembling stand Ponder nothing earthly minded For with blessing in His hand Christ our God to earth homage to Most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for the beautiful day you have given us to come to your presence. This week was a challenge for us. The life on this earth is a big challenge for us during this pandemic period. We understand that you are a God who can strengthen us, Lord. As we are going to meditate from your scriptures, be with us, Lord. Strengthen us, Father. Help us to hear your word. Strengthen me, Lord. Help me to stand behind the cross of yours. Let the meditation, my, my, my meditation of my heart, words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. May your people hear your word through me this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome each and every one of you for this divine hour. God has given us one more Sabbath in our life. So let us meditate upon the Lord. For our opening song, let us all turn our hymnal to 249. Praise Him, praise Him. Hymn number 249. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth is wonderful love proclaim hail him hail him highest archangels in glory strength and honor give to his holy name like a shepherd jesus will guard his children in his arms he carries them all day long praise him praise him tell of his excellent greatness Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises. Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and queen. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him. Ever in joyful song. For our scripture reading, let us turn our Bibles to John chapter 16, 
verse 33. I'm reading from King James Version, John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. May the Lord bless this verse. Let us all bow down our heads for prayer. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere Join us now as we come to you in prayer. Heavenly Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this good day, O oh Lord. Lord, thou hast given us the Sabbath day to keep it holy and to think about you. Lord, help us to meditate on you, Lord, the whole day. Lord, thou hast made this day for us. Lord, help us to Spend this day prayerfully, Lord. Lord, as we're going to take part in this Sabbath program, I, I, I request to bless the speaker of the hour and help him to deliver the message to us, Lord. As we ask to this few blessings in Jesus' precious name, Amen. Ha Good morning. Happy Sabbath, beloved church. I thank the God Almighty for keeping us safe under His wings. Every week, He is protecting us and keeping us safe. I request all the church members to keep apart your tithes and offering. The Treasury Department is working sincerely to keep record of all the tithes and offerings. May the Lord richly bless, bless us. As we sing, give thanks. I request everyone to open your Bibles and place your offering inside the Bibles. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ the Son. of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Him above the heavenly host. Praise.
Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this blessed Sabbath day. We thank you for the, all the blessings we enjoyed from your hand. We pray for the, each and everyone who placed the offering. I pray that you bless the offering and multiply the offering and use it for your cause. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, we have a church pastor to deliver the word of God. I invite our church pastor, Jobis. Good noon and happy Sabbath, everyone. What a privilege for us to come again to worship the Lord through this online service. The Lord is so good, so marvelous, so gracious, so wonderful in our life. He enabled us to come once again to worship the Lord during the Sabbath hour. The Lord is making us to live on this earth with all His blessings in our life. In all our huddles, in our trials, in our worries and problems, the mighty God is thundering us and helping us to worship Him this morning. I wanted to thank you all for keeping us in your prayer, keeping all the church members in your prayer, making us to feel uncomfortable through your prayers and support. As we've come here to worship the Lord, may the Lord bless us abundantly through his word this afternoon and console us and strengthen us. God is good all the time. God is good. There's a story told about a king who loved a lot of paintings in his life. One day, an idea came in his mind where he announced, I have a topic for the painters who love painting. The heading is peace. And if anyone would like to bring a, a beautiful portrait about the topic called peace, and if I love that painting, I will give a huge sum of remuneration for your skill you have painted on the canvas. The news was spread throughout the world. Many people decided to do their art of painting in the canvas with a topic called peace. The king has appointed a special day for them to come and show their painting to the king and to the other people. There was a big hall arranged for all the painters to come and exhibit their skill over there. King comes and he was going through the gallery and watching the beautiful paintings which has been portrayed over there. In one of the pictures he could see a, a beautiful pasture where a lot of animals gazing. He could see the little sh lambs running around and there was a calm pool over there where the animals was coming and quenching their thirst. This picture was a little attractive for the king. Again, the king was going around to see the picture. When he came to one particular painting, it really attracted him and it really meant the topic called peace for, his, for him. The picture was like this. There was a waterfall falling from water, waterfall falling. And nearby the waterfall there was a tree. And one of the branches of the tree was having a nest of a bird. And inside that nest, they could, they, the, the painter drew a bird sleeping over there. So when this picture was seen by the king, it was really attractive for him. And it really made him to feel that this painter has really exhibited the meaning of peace in, through his canvas. 
many times in our life when we look into our past present when we think about our future we all are worried about a peaceful life on this earth a life which is giving us comfort and strength a life which is making us not to worry about anything on this earth we all calculate many things in our life to attain that peaceful life on this earth when we look into our life it says sometimes we are in the midst of the valley not knowing the direction to go where not knowing how we are going to overcome this valleys in our life sometimes our days are very bad where we will feel like oh my god this to me we may be crying and pleading with god why this problem in my life there may be the days very bad for us where we might have thought about committing suicide in amongst all this in our life we think or many think that if i am a christian there is no problems there is no troubles in our life i have seen many people saying this if i am a christian i will not go through this problem if i am if i uh, if i if i am a, a, a christian i will not face this difficulties in my life it's a very wrong concept many of them are having it says we as a christians or the people who love jesus christ will face most of them uh, will face lot of trials in their life where they will be feeling that they are left with no one on this earth but amongst all these things the lord is saying we should not get discouraged in our life i urge you church members if you have your bibles with you kindly turn your bibles along with me uh, to the gospel of john chapter 16 verse 33 gospel of john chapter 16 verse 33 here jesus himself he is proclaiming about a beautiful statement he is giving an assurance to the people who were standing around him it says these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world when we study the bible especially from the book of acts the second chapter of the acts is talking about the upper room experience of the disciples who was scared because they lost their master because the their master has departed from them and there was nobody to lead them when they were in in fear when they were in scared about their life they all came to the upper room and they were praying and we see a wonderful change in the life of the apostles over there that they were filled with the holy spirit and we call it as the day of pentecost after the day of the pentecost again the acts of apostles records a wonderful miracle where john and peter records in the third chapter they were just looking the masters master doing all the all the miracles but this point of time they themselves started doing miracles in their life when we read john acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 we understand about a church which was formed over there in antioquia and the people were starting spreading their gospel to many people but they were even though they were in the joyous occasion of spreading the gospel even though we are having the, the 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 joyous moment of their of their life sharing the love of jesus christ to the many other people even though they were cherishing that greatest experience with jesus christ in their life and his wonders they were going through a lot of persecution at the same time they were going through a lot of tribulation in during that time 
So when we read uh, the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, uh, verses 1 to 3, we understand that even though the church was going through the joyous occasions of their life, they were going through tribulation at the same time. When we read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 26. Here, Paul himself, he is writing to the church over there and making them to understand about the, the, the experience, what they are going through. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, 23, and 26. Here, he states like this, And they ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant in stripes, about the measures in prison, more frequent in death often, of the Jewish five times received, I forty stripes save one. Thrice I was beaten with rod, once I was stoned, thrice I was suffered shipwreck, a night, a day I have been in deep, in journeying often, in prayers of water, in prayers of robber, robbers, in prayers mine, own countrymen, in prayers by the heathens, in prayers in the city, in prayers in the wilderness, and in prayers in the sea, in among the false brethren. So here, Paul himself is writing to the church of Corinth and making them to think that Christian life is not a bed of roses. Rather, it is a life with a lot of struggles and pain in their life. It is a struggle where they need to grow closer to God. When Jesus saw Paul or took Paul in his side, he was a man with a vigorous work. We understand that Paul was going and doing the ministry of God. He never worried about any problems which, is, which, which he was facing in the ministry. Rather, it says he was doing it out of his love towards God. He was finding joy and gladness and happiness in serving for Jesus Christ. When we look into our Christian life, what kind of pain are we going through in our life? We call ourselves as ministers of God. We call ourselves, we are doing the ministry of Jesus Christ. How many times we have gone hunger in our life? How many times in our life we have been beaten by someone for the name of Jesus Christ? How many times in our life we have been put away by others saying that you are a Christian, you should not come towards us? When we look into our life, we are having a beautiful life where we have all, where we, we, where we think about only our own families and our own works. And we feel that was great burden and worries in our life. Here Paul, he himself is saying, amongst all these struggles in my life, yet I am joyful in doing God's ministry. As Jesus told to the disciples, as, as we have read John chapter 16, verse 33, he himself was setting an example to others just like Paul did. Or rather, Paul was setting an example just like what Jesus portrayed or said to them. Jesus said, I have come, overcome this world. This world is a world of tribulation. This world is a world which gives us struggles and pain and agony in our life. This world is a world which always makes us feel that we have no one on this earth. Whenever Jesus felt lonely on this earth, whenever Jesus felt that he has been, uh, been uh, tested by Satan, Whenever Jesus felt that the trials are coming in front of his life, he depended on his father 
and father made him to overcome all the tribulations in his life with his experience jesus told to us when you see all this tribulations in your life you are not supposed to get worried you are not supposed to get dismayed in your life rather you should be of good courage cheer jesus said you need to be cheerful there's an incident where we read in the book of i mean gospel of mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 39 here we see an incident where jesus was going with his disciples in the sea where jesus was we uh, when we read mark uh, chapter 4 verses uh, 35 to mark chapter 4 35 to 39 we see that we see that jesus was along with his disciples they were traveling through the sea to a uh, land and while they were traveling in the sea all of a sudden there was a big storm taking place you may have heard the story many a times so it says when they when uh, when when the boat was tossed up in the waves when they were when the when the waves was making them to have the fear of their life we see that jesus disciples who was the fishermen who knew the sea very well they were trying their best to make their life safe they were doing their best to make themselves to be safe from this wave or the water which was gushing into the boat when we read this portion of mark chapter 4 verse 38 it says when the disciples were doing their best to struggling there in the boat to save themselves what was jesus doing and he was in the hidden hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they wake him and say unto him master careest thou not that we perish here we see that a master who was doing lot of miracle in front of these disciples a master who was proclaiming the gospel to all the people along with the disciples a master who has raised the dead people a master who has healed the people just by saying a word a master who has healed a woman when she touched at the brim of his cloth there his disciple who ha- who has seen all this miracle now when the ship was in the storm they could not trust their master they were doing their best to make themselves safe but all their struggles when in vain that's some moment they thought about the master and what was jesus doing there i could not imagine i can i, I was just trying to imagine how could jesus sleep when the ship was in the rough sea we might have seen through movies or we might have seen some document documentaries where they shield the way they shows us the rough sea situation and where the ships are been in the rough sea water gushing in people screaming for their life people trying their best to balance their ship the captains doing all their best and knowledge to make their ship straight in the waves when all this incident was going i cannot understand how jesus was sleeping inside the ship or the boat and it says mark he read and he was in the hindered part of the ship asleep on a pillow asleep is a beautiful word a, a, a vocabulary you can find because we all love to have this in our life to have a deep sleep a sleep where nothing will hinder us 
a sleep where we are very much into it that we will not knowing what is happening around us. We see Jesus sleeping, as Je where Jesus was in a sleep. There's a moment when disciples comes and tells them, tells him, and they woke him and saying unto him, Master, careth thou not that we perish? They were doing their best when they failed in that one. That's the moment they thought about the master. That's the moment they understood that, oh, we have our master, Jesus, who is here. And what he's doing? They comes and when they see Jesus sleeping over there, they were in range of anchor. They, were, they could not control their emotions. They call him and tell, Master, do you understand that we are going to die? We are going to perish. And how, how come you, you are sleeping over here? What was Jesus' response? It says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. It says, He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. When disciples tried their best to fight against the anger of the nature, when they tried their best to defend the anger of, their na uh, anger of the nature, when they failed, they comes to the master, thinking that he can do wonders, thinking that he can do some miracle, or he can save them somehow from this death. That point of time, Jesus comes. He does not do anything or uh, do much greater things to make them to believe. He just comes and tells to the wind, come. And said unto the sea also, peace be still. It says, the sea which was rough, the nature which was in its most angered moment, it came down in seconds of time. The wind stopped blowing. The sea came very calm, peace, and the water was still for the ship to start its sail. I like the beautiful thing, uh, the, 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 the sentence which states here. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. There was a great calm. That means the ship which was about to wreck, the ship which was about to destroy, started its journey again without any hurdles, without any difficulty. This evening, this morning, I just wanted to share with you a few points. When we are in storm, when we are in the hurdles in our life, when we face struggles and uh, struggles in our life, what are we supposed to do as a good Christians? I urge you all to open your scriptures to the epistle of Second Corinthians, chapter eight, chapter one. Verses 8. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Here, Paul is writing to the church of Corinth and make them understand that. First of all, we read in the Second Corinthians chapter 11 and telling, uh, he was trying to tell them about the, the, the struggles, what he has gone through. So this part is an introduction part for them saying about the struggles and what we should do as a Christians. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. For we could not, brethren, have you ignored of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above the strength, in so much that we were despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the death. So, Paul is telling to the church in the Corinth and making them to understand that when they started their ministry in the land of Asia, they had a lot of problems. 
So here Paul is writing to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. He says, For we could not, brethren, have you ignored of our troubles which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above the strength, in so much that we were despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Here Paul is telling to the church of Corinth and make them to understand that. When I go through storms in my life, when I go through storms in my life, I should learn to trust in God. So as a good Christian in our life, the first thing what we need to learn in our life is trusting in God. Here, Paul is telling that their ministry in the land of Asia was not a smooth one. They were not able to go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people. It was a struggle for them. It was not only a small struggle that what they were facing in Asia. He says, we were pressed out of a mission, above the strength, in so much, in so much, we thought that our life is in danger. They were pressed out. It says they were not getting the pressure from one angle. Rather, from all the sides, they were getting pressure. He was not knowing how to do the ministry. They thought that his life is going to, or he is going to perish over there in the land of Asia. When they went through all the difficulties, when they went through all the problems, it says what made Paul to be strong. But we had that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. When all this pressure was thronging around him, when he thought that they're going to die in that place, the thing Paul is telling to the church of Corinth, when you feel that you have a storm in front of you, let you not trust in yourself, but trust in God. Trust in God. That was the great failure of disciple also. When they saw, when they had Jesus in their ship, when the storm was raised in the sea, when they saw their boat was going to sink, they should not have that fear in them. Rather, they should have had the trust that they have Jesus who is in the ship who can make the sea calm, who can make the wind still. They fail over there. So Paul is writing to us through Corinthians and making us also to understand that when we are pressed in our life in many angles, let us not trust in our ability. Let us not trust in our, our knowledge. Let us not trust in our wisdom. I can handle it. When we give it in the hand of God, He can do a wonderful job. Let it be our death. Let it be anything which is coming across our way. As a good Christian, let us put trust in God. The second thing as a good Christian we have to do is in 2 Corinthians, again Paul is writing to them and saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, Who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in many trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of the Christ bound in us, so our consolation also bounded by Christ. So here Paul is writing and telling to the church, or writing to us, we as a Christian have come across many trials in our life. How are we comforting? When God has comforted in our life, when we have gone through all these trials in our life, how are we comforting our brothers and sisters who is going through the difficulties in their life? I've seen many people in our church in the previous times 
We have seen people coming together and talking about their problems, their difficulties. I've seen them sitting together and praying to God and asking God to lead the family who is going through the difficulties in their life. Nowadays, most of us are in good position where we don't think about much, we are not much worried about our problems in our life. We think, take many things very light. When we have experienced the comfort from God, how are we sharing that comfort to others? Are we able to make them also feel that there's a God who can really comfort us in our workplace? Sometimes your colleague may come and tell you, Oh, this is too much for me. I cannot take it in my life. I'm thinking about quitting. What was your word to them? When somebody comes near your neighbor and coming and telling you about their family issues, oh, it's too much for me. I'm unable to overcome this hardship in my life. What was your word to them? Were you able to comfort them? When I enjoy that comfort which God is giving to me, how much are we there to comfort others through our words, through our, through our look, through our smile, and make them feel comfortable? Many times it happens. Sometimes when we come to church also, we, we hardly give a smile to others. Our own, our own uh, uh, brothers and sisters who come and worship with us. How much can we smile then to the others outside us? Uh, how many of you smile to some strangers on the road? Sir, hey, just giving a smile to them. You know, if you give a smile to some people, person like that, some changes can take place the life. That's what Paul is telling. He's telling you have enjoyed that beautiful comfort the Lord has given to you when you was in problem. How are you sharing that comfort to others? As a student, when your fellow student comes and tells to you, you know, I'm going through this problem in my family. How are you comforting them? Well, I, I went <clears throat> this uh, two years back when I went for uh, conducting a week of prayer. After the prayer meeting was over, I was going and giving counseling to the students in the classroom. There I met one girl who, uh, many students come and talk about their family issues every time and I, I pray with them and make them comfortable. Even after the week of prayer is over, they, some of them used to call me and I used to pray with them. Still there's a student who always calls me from this particular school from Pondicherry. Her family was going through a lot of problem. Her father is a drunkard. A man who comes and abuses his wife and his children. A family who was going through a lot of pressure because of financial crisis. A family which was going through a lot of pressure because of the father's bad habit. When all this was in the mind of this girl, she used to call me and tell me, Pastor, it's very really hard for me to do my studies. I want to do my best in my exam. I wanted to pass my, my 10th grade with good marks so that I can, get a, I can enroll myself into a good school without paying any fees because my father is unable to pay fees for me and for my brother. Pray for me. I used to, whenever she calls, I, we used to pray. My wife used to comfort her through words. It was an amazing testimony of this girl when she called me after the 10th exam, previous to one year back. She said, I want to thank the Almighty God for His view, for His, for His leading in my life. I pray to God, even all these difficulties, my father coming and shouting at home, my father abusing my mother, my father coming and scolding and shouting and yelling at my family. The Lord made me to study better. I was able to get 90% of marks 
total marks. Now I am enrolled in one of the best schools in this place. And they have given me full free of tuition. My fees is completely free and I can do my education there. What a beautiful God we serve my dear brothers and sisters. When my Lord comforts me, how are we comforting others? When somebody comes to us, let us not neglect their pain and their sorrow as simple. Maybe your one word can encourage them. Maybe your time you're spending to listen to, your, to their problems can comfort them. When my Lord comforts us, let us also comfort others the way the Lord has given us. So the first thing, as a good Christian, we need to trust in God. Second thing, as a good Christian, we need to comfort others also with the comfort the Lord has given to us. Why should we comfort others in our life? It says uh, in, uh, by Paul, when God rescues us in answer, in our prayers, many people will glorify God. As I said, this girl is from a Hindu family. Now she is ready to take baptism after the 12th standard. And I'm very sure that the Lord who made her to overcome the problem in her life will make her to stand for his glory. And I'm very much sure that when she grows up in her life, one day she will be a great witness for God wherever she goes around and telling them that I was endless pain, but when I gave it in the hand of God, God delivered me. And I'm praying that she will be a great witness for God wherever she goes. Let people see that she is God's child. What about us? What about us? When we experience all the blessings from God, we, have, we are forgetting about testifying the great blessing the Lord has given to us. I always love to share <clears throat> with my wife the, the things which are the blessings the Lord has given in our life. People may say many things about us, but we are so much privileged in our life that we are getting three times meal. We have a shelter to live in. We have a place where we can live, where we can uh, go around so that the people will see how much we are blessed in our life. So my dear members in Christ, this afternoon as you're going through your scriptures in your mind, let us understand that in our troubles and trials and tribulations of our life, the first thing what we need to have is trust in God. Secondly, let us comfort others who are having the tribulation in their life. And the third part in our life is that let many people see through our works and deeds <clears throat> that we are God's children and let them glorify God. The third, the fourth point which I'd like to share with you is we get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. In our life, we may get knocked down many times. We may fall many times in our life. But the Lord is saying, even if you fall in a life, you don't need to worry about it. We have a God who can lift us up. When Paul <clears throat> writes to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are uh, perplexed, perplexed but not despaired, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. In our life, we may feel that 
we are troubled on every side when we look into the life of job he was a man who was living a very good life people looked at his life were jealous people were looking at the job of a life with jealous and they were thinking how well he is living on this earth but when he lost everything when he lost his children when he lost his wealth when he lost his servants when he lost all the things on this earth job was a man who was able to tell to his wife you are speaking like a fool god has given and god has taken how many times in our life we are able to say like this i'm very sure that paul might have studied the experience of job or the other people who have gone through the tribulation in their life and who was successful because they had hope that even they fall there's a god who can raise them up that's why job told his wife i don't care for anything the lord has given and the lord has taken and the lord can give me with no burden so paul is telling to us we are troubled on every side let us not get distressed we are perplexed but not despaired persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed when problem comes to us when trials comes to us people will say that oh it is he's gone or she's gone she will not come up in the life and who is there to help them and they are going to vanish from this earth and they are going to be destroyed on this earth let us not get discouraged those who are hearing my word this afternoon in your life you may be going through this type of situation as this covid has affected this world very badly the financial crisis is some of the greatest pressure giving factor in every family i've seen my friends who are struggling in their life again uh, in their life who has a lot of pressure thinking about their future i always tell them you should not worry about it if god can give you a job if god can lead you this far he will make you to move again in your life my dear brothers and sisters in christ this afternoon if you feel you have fallen if you feel that you are knocked down understand that the lord will make you to stand up again in your life not with a single portion of blessing rather with a double portion of the blessing which he has given to job the only thing what we need to do is completely trust in god telling that god this all things happen in my life because of your understand because of your will and i know that without your understanding nothing will happen in my life and i know that you can bless me with double portion help me not to forsake the good blessings in my life let me always trust in you and live for you so as a christian let's let us put trust in god let us comfort others with the comfort where we are getting from god let others see that we are blessed by god and let them glorify god and let us understand this afternoon that even if we are knocked down we will get a bit, get up again in our life the last point i wanted to share with you this afternoon in your tribulation and trial is this no matter how long the trouble last it would not last forever it will not last forever just one day back i was <clears throat> listening to the news where one lady has died in the plane crash in karipur in kerala and the reporter was talking about her life and saying that 
she was struggling throughout her life till her death dreaming that all her problems will be solved and she will be happy living happily on this earth we as a human being every individual who are able to think earn and live him and herself has the problem of dreaming the best, better future we think that my problem in my life is the biggest one we think that my problem is the problem where i cannot solve or, or i cannot overcome but god is telling to us that all the problems in our life will not last for a long it is just for a short time that's why paul writes in second corinthians <clears throat> chapter 4 verses 17 and 18 for your light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceedingly and eternally weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal when we look into our life for this moment of time we may be thinking lord how i'm going to overcome lord will i be able to overcome all these things the lord is telling to us through paul the things in this world is temporal it is just for a time it is just for a short period of time all this things which we are undergoing should make us a purified goal for god's glory purified for god's glory if you are not able to purify ourselves in this tribulation of time when god comes in the clouds of heaven our reward will not be given to us we will be found lessen the balance we will be found guilty in front of god so my dear brothers and sisters in christ this afternoon i wanted to refresh your mind with a thought from the scripture is this when never you see the tribulation in your life whenever you experience tribulation in your life whenever you understand that you are going through the tribulation and pain in your life you should not worry about <clears throat> those tribulation understand that there's a god who can lead you through that point of time we may see red seas in front of us we may see jordan in front of us we may see jericho cities in front of us we may see our enemies thousands and 10000s in front of us but understand when we put our trust in our living god when we put our complete trust in him he will make us to overcome the tribulation in our life because and Jesus has undergone this tribulation and he was able to overcome it with the help of his father and Jesus himself is saying cheer up you don't need to worry about it this afternoon i do not know what is your problem in your life it can be your financial difficulty which is troubling you it can be your job which you are, you felt all this while was a secured is troubling for you it can be your family which you felt that should have that bond of love to continue might have been in in, in problem it can be the other issues in your life which you think lord this is too much for me to handle the lord is saying you don't need to worry about it all these things you can pass on in this life and lord is telling this life is the very shortest life on this earth live it peacefully live it peacefully when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven let us be called as faithful and obedient servant let that be 
our experience in our life. This afternoon, I wanted to give an assurance in your life is this. We might be going through many trials. We might be walking through valleys in our life, but understand there's a God who can make us <clears throat> everything comfortable. Let us find comfort in the time of trouble through Jesus till he comes in the clouds of heaven. May the Lord keep you safe and bless you abundantly. I pray that this message will be in your heart and make you understand that. Let us find comfort in the time of trouble in Jesus. God bless us. And happy Sabbath. I thank Pastor Jobis for sharing the word of God. In order to close our divine hour, let us all unite and sing song number 462, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine, O oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's pray. Our most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have given us, Lord. We thank you for the message you have given us this afternoon. Let us find comfort in our troubles, Lord. As a bird was finding its comfort under the, in the, in, inside the nest, when the water was falling and giving it trouble, in our life, when we go through many problems and troubles in our life, let us completely put our trust in you, Jesus, because you have undergone the tribulation in your life and you have overcome it, Lord. 
Help us to follow your path in our life, Lord. As this COVID is destroying many lives on this earth. As the COVID is taking the peace of mind from many people. The COVID, as COVID is spreading the fear in the life of many people. I pray in the name of Jesus. As your children, let us not worry about anything on this earth, Lord. Give us your word every day, strengthen us, Lord. Give us your scriptures in our lives so that we will be able to live according to your promises in our life, Father. I submit each and every church members this afternoon, be with them, Lord. Strengthen them, every, everyone, Lord. We pray for Brother Elvis' family, be, them, be, be with them, Lord. We pray that you will be touching everyone and giving them good health and strength. We pray for other family members who are really sick. May your mighty hands be upon them and healing them. We pray for the elders of our church, Lord. Keep everyone safe under your wing, Father. We pray for the middle-aged people and the youngsters you have given to our church. Give them all your blessings in their life, along with the little one you have added, Lord. As we are passing through this trouble or tribulation in our life, help us to understand that a God who has made the Israel to walk through the dead, uh, through the the sea will be making us also to walk in our life, Lord, helping us to see the beautiful land of Canaan in our life, Father. We submit each and every one of us under, under your thing, Lord. I pray for the families who are going through uh, many issues in their life, oh, Lord, the financial issues, the family issues, the other problems in their life, the sickness which they are going through in their life, Father. Be with them, Lord. Make them to come back to their normal life so that they'll be able to praise your name. We pray and ask all this blessing in the mighty name of Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. May the grace of the Lord, love of Jesus Christ, and sweet communion of Holy Spirit abide with us forevermore, especially may the leading of God be with us through this COVID-19, helping us to come to the sanctuary to worship Him. Till then, may the Lord keep us safely and protect us forevermore. Amen. the soap that burns within our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone impart, faith in the promise of His Word. We believe the time is here when the nations far and near shall awaken shout and sing hallelujah christ is king